Hello students. Now, in this module, let's mainly discuss about the development of external genitalia. This external genitalia development mainly depends on the presence or absence of the dihydrotestosterone. You need to keep this point in mind. A very very important point is so. Let's take all the important points. External genitalia development starts. by 9 weeks week 9 it starts by week 9 now the development of this external genitalia mainly depends on the presence or absence of the dihydrotestosterone what does i mean see if it is a male fetus now inside a male fetus there will be presence of a testis so this testis they will produce a testosterone now because of this testosterone usually the testosterone will be converted into dihydrotestosterone with the help of enzyme 5 alpha reductase we have already discussed it now if it is a male fetus because of the presence of dihydrotestosterone a certain embryological structures they will be converted into male external genitalia now a simple absence of a dihydrotestosterone will convert the same embryological structures into a female external genitalia that is vulva so by default the external genitalia development will be a female like this is the key point you have to keep in mind so take these points external genai atelia development depends on either presence or absence okay either presence or absence of dihydrotestosterone by default the external genitalia development will be by default the external genitalia development will be a female like what does i mean guys if there is no dihydrotestosterone then what happens the external genitalia will becomes a female like that is it will become vulva now you have to know that which embryological structure will become which structures in the baby what does i mean by for example guys please concentrate the genital tubercle see this genital tubercle in males under the influence of this dihydrotestosterone this genital tubercle it will become glans penis okay but the same genital tubercle if there is no dihydrotestosterone in the females it will become clitoris okay also along with this clitoris it will become vestibular bulbs okay so the important point you have to keep in mind here is the clitoris is a derivative of genital tubercle now the urogenital sinus this urogenital sinus in a male same under the influence of dihydrotestosterone it will become bulbo urethral glands prostate glands next urinary bladder and urethra
okay now this urogenital sinus if there is no dihydrotestosterone in males it will become sorry in females it will become greater vestibular glands urethral and para paraurethral glands urethral and para urethral glands next it will form a distal vagina guys please remember the vagina fibromuscular tube this vagina is divided into three parts upper one third middle one third lower one third the upper and middle one third of the vagina it is derived from mullerian ducts but the lower one third of the vagina is derived from the urogenital sinus so here i am writing lower one third of vagina so this is a very important mcq you have to keep in mind regarding exams okay they will ask you digital part of vagina or lower one third of vagina is derived from urogenital sinus after this here also same urinary bladder and urethra okay so these are also structures which are derived from urogenital sinus now the embryological structure urogenital folds the urogenital folds are derived into not derived into develops into okay so the urogenital folds develops into in male they will develop into penile urethra see it is a penile urethra means the part of urethra which is present in the penis okay so penile urethra is derived from the specifically mention you penile urethra okay also there is prostatic urethra but they specifically mention you penile urethra is derived from urogenital sinus okay now ventral a penile shaft okay so ventral aspect of the penis okay the ventral aspect of the penis is also derived from the urogenital folds but the same urogenital folds in a female there they will develop into labia minora okay so if someone ask you labia minora are derived from urogenital folds and this labioscrotal swellings now this labioscrotal swellings in a male they develop into see this labioscrotal swellings they can also call it as genital swellings okay you can also call it as aka also known as genital swellings why because in the exams these days they are asking genital swellings they will develop into in males they develop into scrotum but in females the same labio genital swellings will develop into labia majora okay so what you have to keep in mind the single important point you have to keep in mind is the development of external genitalia depends on the presence or absence of the dihydrotestosterone in the presence of dihydrotestosterone the embryological structures these embryological structures okay which i have shown you here these embryological structures they will develop into male external genitalia in the absence of dihydrotestosterone by default they will change into female like external genitalia that is a vulva which consists of all the following structures clitoris labia majora labia minora okay vestibule that and all okay after this in the next module let's discuss about the descent of gonads how the gonads which are formed in the intra abdominal organs which are formed as a intra abdominal organs how they have descended down to their places okay descended down to their this is how the development of external genitalia occurs